Today, we want to talk about the importance of setting boundaries in a relationship that's especially narcissistic, whether that's in or during or after the relationship, it's important to be able to develop and set boundaries. If you guys are new here, my name is Ben Taylor. I'm a self-aware narcissist on this channel to provide awareness, growth, healing, change, and development. I'm the founder of Raw Motivations, the creator of the NARCAP, and your guide in the 45-day Clarity Challenge. That today is one of the last days to be able to sign up at claritychallenge.net. So check that out. Do you like what you see here talking about narcissism, narcissistic abuse, my journey through narcissism? Please subscribe. Hit that notification so you can get notified when we go live on the channel, when we do a Q&A, when new videos drop, all those different type of things. We'd love to have you part of this community. So hit that like, hit that subscribe. Well, today we're talking about like understanding about boundaries and the importance of it and talking through some of that. So a lot of times it's hard for a lot of people to have boundaries, for them to put boundaries in their life, for them to actually know what boundaries need to look like, how they need to do, how they need to do that, how they need to implement that. And a lot of times there's like no clue, like where do I even start? Like how do I start to develop having good boundaries in my life? So we want to talk today about discussing the importance of boundaries, what boundaries sometimes can look like or different variations of those. And and then some of the barriers to actually establishing boundaries and then what to pursue. Okay, so that's where we're going. So a lot of times we notice when you've been with a narcissist or getting into a relationship with a narcissist that you have no boundaries at all. Maybe being with a narcissist has completely destroyed those or left you adrift with not having boundaries that you used to have. This is because a lot of times when you're with a toxic person, they'll slowly work on breaking those down eroding your boundaries to the place that you no longer have boundaries. You no longer have something that says, no, I'm not going to do this because when you did that, you got punished for it. When you did that, you got persecuted. When you did that, you got yelled at. You got abused in multiple different ways. So it made sense not to have boundaries. Oftentimes when people are getting out of a relationship, they no longer have a sense of self. Like they no longer know who they are. They struggle with that because their self-esteem, their confidence has been ripped apart, has been broken down so much. They're like, I don't even know where to start. Like how am I supposed to start to have boundaries or develop boundaries when it doesn't even feel safe to be able to have those boundaries? Maybe you're in the place where you don't know who you are, but you also don't have a purpose or like a direction because you thought you had that for a moment with that other person, with that toxic person in your life. And once they left, you're left to drift knowing, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I don't know where I'm supposed to go. I'm not, I don't know how I'm supposed to act. And so a lot of times when people are dealing with setting up boundaries, we notice that narcissists typically destroy those boundaries or give you a playing field that's like, I can't even make a boundary. I don't even know where to start. But what I want to propose to you is the idea of that without actually establishing boundaries, without putting boundaries into play, there's no aspect for healing. Like there's no way to be able to move forward in a healing process if your boundaries are constantly getting run over. This is why so many people goes from zero to 100 of like, hey, I'm setting a boundary and it's always blown through. So then they have to leave. That's not the ultimate goal of a boundary. The, the goal of a boundary is to limit like how much access someone has to you or to limit the toxicity and not to have to break up with people, not to have to leave relationships, not to have to separate. But when we're talking about a narcissist, there normally is no regard and no respect for a boundary. So it normally leads to that very quickly. Uh, typically when people don't have boundaries, there's no healing, there's no freedom, there's no success moving forward, like in their growth journey, in their healing journey, there's no opportunity for them to actually win because they're always stuck. They're always beaten down. They're always broken because of those boundaries that they haven't established or they've always been blown through. So let's talk really quick about the importance of boundaries. The importance of boundaries, I broke down to three things. The first one is protection. And that idea is to protect you from further abuse. Okay, protect you from the abuse that's happening in the relationship or the relationship down the road. Okay, that is the whole idea of the boundary there. Like it needs to be a way to protect you. So many times people don't have boundaries and as a result, they get out of the relationship and they end up going back to that person because they didn't have a guideline. They didn't have something that was actually keeping them on the path. So as a result, they're like, no, this might be right. And they go back to this person. It helps a yeah, boundary also helps you in protection with not getting with someone down the road that's toxic because you're like, wait a second, like I don't want this person to treat me like this. I don't want to be treated like this. This isn't something that I value or that I want in my life because of how they are treating or disrespecting me. So I think importance of boundaries, number one is protection. Number two is healing. 
And first off, like when you're in the relationship or when you're getting out of the relationship, a boundary helps you to limit the toxicity. Like it's that line in the sand of like, this is me. This is how far I'm going to let you push my boundary. You want to go past that? Like I'm not doing that anymore. Because I know this is amount, this is the amount that I want to have in my life. So as you start to learn more and more about narcissism, as you start to learn more and more about toxicity, that lowers and lowers and lowers. You're like, I don't really tolerate a lot of this BS that I'm getting from people. Okay. Uh, the whole goal is then is like with that healing piece, that protection piece comes in is like, I want to guard you from that toxicity. Like I want to keep you from going back to that toxic person and to make sure that your healing matters so much that nothing is going to hold you back from that healing. So importance of boundaries, protection, healing. The other one is focus. Okay. I, I think it's, it's a huge part is when you bring boundaries in your life, you're able to grow without distractions. Now, the idea would be like, as you continue to grow and move forward, you have like a guide, you have a direction that you want to go. And those boundaries actually keep you honed in, keep you focused. Now, I don't mean like locked in. So like you can't pivot or you can't change, but it keeps you focused on the ultimate goal that you're looking for. The problem is a lot of times people don't have goals. They're just doing life. They're just moving one step in front of the other without really any purpose, any direction. But when you're able to engage with healthy boundaries, you're able to grow without the distractions. You're able to have a guide moving forward of this is the direction that I need to go. So importance of boundaries, protection, healing, and focus. What do those boundaries look like? They come in all different shapes and sizes. Boundaries are all across the board, completely different for everybody out there. Now, you could have a, a physical boundary of like, I, I don't want you near me. I don't want you touching me like this. I don't want you doing this to me. You could have emotional boundary of like, I don't feel safe in this aspect. You could have a communication boundary. Like those are like big buckets. You know, it could be communicating like that you need space, like that you need time to be able to work through something. You need to develop this moment here for your thoughts and for your feelings. Like you need to develop a boundary of your time spent with others, maybe adjusting how much time, maybe adjusting too little, too much. You need to have a boundary maybe with money, of money for yourself, money for you and that other person. Uh, maybe it's just about different communication. Maybe it's about getting work calls 24 seven. Like, no, I have a boundary. Like when I'm home, I'm only gonna take you know this call or I'm not gonna take this call once I get home, whatever it might be, okay? So there's lots of different things. Maybe it's a boundary with yourself of like, okay, I need to work on boundary of like how I'm engaging with my electronics, with my phone. You know, maybe it's like I need to, to, to work on a boundary of like the response time that I'm required to give another person. You know, maybe it's an accountability thing. Maybe it's a habit thing. Boundaries come in all different shapes and sizes. But the problem is when we talk about boundaries and when we say like, hey, let's work on boundaries, people are like, what, 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 do, we, what do we do? Okay. And so a lot of times people like freak out and get really like worried about like, I don't know what to do when we're talking about boundaries. Okay. Then, so some of the barriers to boundaries. First off, we have like just generalized like guilt, fear of rejection, uh, the loss of self esteem. Like there's all these different things that are like, I'm not sure if I want to engage with these boundaries because I don't know what's going to happen. Okay. So the number one thing that I would say biggest barrier to boundaries, number one is you. Now, stick with me for a second, because I do think that this is pretty accurate. Like one of the biggest barriers to your boundaries is you actually knowing the truth about the situation and about you. Oftentimes, you are holding yourself back from the truth. Sometimes people want closure when they already know the facts, but they would rather have the other person admit it to validate their own feelings or opinion. Sometimes you already know the direction you want to go and you just haven't implemented those boundaries. Sometimes you have no clue who you are and no clue the direction you want to go, which still comes back to you defining what you want and the direction you want to go. Once you start defining this, then you can start actually developing boundaries to keep you on that path. You can develop goals and habits and positive triggers to keep you moving forward in the direction that you are meant to be. Oftentimes, I think one of the biggest barriers to building boundaries is first off you, is you don't know who you are. The second one is a lack of vision. No idea of who you are, but then also no idea of where you're going. Of actually like the direction, the path, the plan of like, this is where I want to be. This is who I want to be. This is how I want to develop. This is all these different things, you know, like I don't even have a, a goal. And so many times people don't know who they are. And as a result, they don't have goals. They don't have vision. They don't have like the direction that they want to go. And they're left adrift thinking like, well, maybe I'll just find this with someone else. Maybe I'll just do this with someone else. Maybe, oh, this is a good idea. And they start going to a different direction. 
Now, it doesn't mean you can't change directions. It doesn't mean you can't change ideas. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying a lot of times when people struggle to develop boundaries, they don't know who they are and they don't know the direction that they're going. The third thing is once you figure out who you are, once you figure out the direction you want to go, is then what supporting values you're actually building in. Because a lot of times another barrier is there's no supporting values. Like there's no support to the vision. There's no support to the boundaries. There's nothing keeping you on the road, like the direction you want to go, to the vision you want to go with these values along the road that are actually guidelines to be able to help you move in the direction that you want to move. This is where you have to understand who you are, where you want to go, and why. Like, how are you going to do it? Like, putting in the why behind it of like, because this is who I want to live as. This is who I want to be. This is why it goes back to one of the biggest barriers starting off is you not knowing you. So I mentioned what to pursue at the beginning of this. Part of the pursuit is the pursuit of truth. Part of the pursuit is you. Who are you? Who are you apart from what you do? Who do you want to be? What direction do you want to go? What vision do you have? What values are you having, are you putting into your life to help you move forward in positivity? Help you move forward in your growth, in your healing journey to be the person that you were meant to be, to be the person you were called to be, to be the person that you know you should be. It's in your power, it's in your grasp to be able to do that. This is why I'm calling you to go to claritychallenge.net and check out the 45-day Clarity Challenge. Because the whole goal behind it is to find you. Is for you to take back yourself again after the toxicity, in the toxicity, wherever you might be with the toxicity, is to find the truth of you and continue moving forward in your growth, in your healing, in your change. If you're lost, if you feel adrift, if you don't know what's going on, if you feel crazy being with a toxic or a narcissistic person, like that is for you to help you find yourself and take back your power. This is one of the last days that we're offering it this month for you to be able to sign up and go through with a group of survivors that have been in a narcissistic relationship or currently are in a narcissistic relationship and they're looking for clarity and they're looking for the truth. Join up today at claritychallenge.net.